Hey there, this episode we're gonna be talking about what is MVC. We've heard the terminology uh, mentioned around Rails. Rails uses MVC, what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna explain it to you and it's a lot more straightforward than you probably think. MVC stands for Model View Controller uh, and let's write those out. Model View Controller. And this is basically an organization pattern for your code in your web application. So when you're deciding where does this code go, we have these three primary buckets that we can use to define where the code goes. So what are each of these three components? Well, first we have our models. This is our database um, layer. And basically this is where all of the code that decides like validations and formatting and associations and other things that are represented in our code that are actually uh, going to talk to our database. So for example, if we have a user's table in our database, our model might have some validations and say, you must put an email and a password, but you also must pass in a password confirmation that matches the password. So we know that you typed it in correctly. Um, and it might have other things in there as well, like your email address must be a work email and it cannot be gmail.com. That logic around what is allowed into our database and how we query and modify and delete things in our database will all live in your model folder in your Rails app and that is what is um, going to be Ruby classes that interact with your database. Now your views are pretty straightforward as well. This is the HTML, the JSON, and maybe even XML if you use that. Um, but this is like the output of your application. So when a user comes to your homepage or goes to Google, Google server says, okay, uh, we'll serve you up the homepage of Google, which is their main search box and their logo and it's a bunch of HTML. And uh, that's the views in MVC. So it's basically the, the sort of output you send back to the user. Now the controller is pretty much what it says. This handles your requests, requests, and it is the one deciding how things are processed. Now there's also a couple of little related concepts that I'm gonna mention here called routes and helpers. Um, and these kind of live around all of this stuff, but the core of your Rails application will be MVC, models, views, and controllers. So let's talk about an example request that we might see uh, coming to our Rails app. A user might come to the sign up URL, and this is what we would consider a route. And a route is just a URL that the user types in. We don't really care about the domain, we just care about what path they went to. And then inside of the routes file in our Rails app, which we'll see in the future, a route is going to tell it which controller to send the request to. So for example, this one might have users registrations controller. And it can have a couple things that it does in here. Like first, when you come to sign up, it will render out the form so you can fill out your email and password so you can sign up. Um, and this user's registrations controller is then going to uh, basically talk to the database um, and say, hey, we need a new user, what fields are available? And so this is going to make a quick uh, request to our user model. And then it's gonna give that back to the user's registrations controller. And then it's also then going to say, okay, we have a new user, let's render the HTML for the form. And this is going to go to the uh, form HTML view and render that out for the user. And then they'll fill out the form and you will have basically another request that does almost the same thing, except it's processing the data that the user sends us. So this first one will be a get request. And a route is really the combination of the HTTP method plus the path. And so we will have another one down here, which will be a post request to send data to create a record on the server. And this will be also to the sign uh, 
up URL and it will go to the same users registrations controller and then this one is going to then talk to our user model but it's going to try to save the data in the database for the user. So then this is going to give us back um, some information. And so it may say that was successful. And then we can say, okay, great. Let's log the user in and then redirect them to the home page. Or the controller might find out, oh, we tried to save the user, but their passwords did not match. So there was a failure and our controller decides Depending on what happened here under the user model, we may want to do different things for the response. So here we can say on success, we want to log in user, which is going to set a cookie in the response to log them in. And then this will also redirect to maybe the root route, which is the, the home page. So on a failure, we'll say failure. In this case, we want to render the form HTML again, but this time with errors. And that way we'll kind of go back from here up to the original get sign up, which it'll look almost the same, but this case we will have information about the user's data that they sent us, like the passwords maybe do not match. And so we can tell them in the HTML in the form and say, Hey, your passwords did not match or your email was invalid or your password was too short. And we can then re-render the same form that they had with those additional errors. And so here are a couple examples of MVC in action. We have the route starting the process to tell it which controller to go to. And then we have our users registrations controller that handles everything to do with the registration of a user. And um, then those will both talk to the model and say, hey, we want to create a new user. Um, one in the initial form, we'll just make a new user in memory, and then give that to the HTML view in order to render out the form and say, here's all the fields we need to fill out. Then the browser receives that HTML. The user will fill it out in the browser, send it back to the server with a post request this time, and it will happen down here on the second section. And that is where it will attempt to save that in the database with the user model right here. And then depending on the result of that, the controller will decide if it was successful, we can set a cookie, redirect you to the homepage and you'll be logged in now as that user. Or if this was a failure, we wanna go back a step, render the form again, we could save your email in the form. That way we don't lose it and you don't have to retype it every time. But we can also include errors for any of the fields that were invalid. And uh, that is basically MVC in a nutshell. It is these three components they help you decide where your code goes. So if I asked you to say, um, we wanna require passwords that are 12 characters or more, anything less than that would be invalid. And I ask you, where would you put that code? Would you put it in your model, your view, or your controller? And you would say, it would go in the model because that is the place that we want to pre-process any, any database uh, records before they get saved in the database. Our database isn't gonna be smart enough to know that we need passwords to be more than 12 characters. So we would write that code in Ruby in our model and then have it verify the user's data they gave us for their password, count the length of it, make sure it's 12 or more, and we can then save it into the database in, an, in a hashed format so we can never see the raw password. And that logic will happen inside of our database model. Then, if I was to ask you about something um, for displaying a user's profile on the page in HTML, we wanna include their avatar and their image and stuff, that would go in your views because that is where we define our HTML that uh, you get to see in the browser. And then if I asked you to basically 
take an area of your application and make it admin only, what we could do is we could put that code in the controller so that we could, before we process any of that request, we could verify that the user's logged in and they are an admin, and if they're not, redirect them to the home page with an error. So our controller handles those requests and decides, how are we going to process this? And that is the main three components of handling uh, requests in web applications, and that's why model view controller kind of represents those main three concerns that you have as a developer. And this is how Rails is organized. You will see in your Rails app that you have an app models, app views, and app controllers folder, and that's where you define all of that code, and Rails has that already set up for you so you know exactly what files and what patterns to follow to write your code. And it will save you a whole lot of time deciding where should this code live, and you will be less likely to create a mess for yourself in the future because you have these buckets to jump to right away. Now, of course, complicated applications may need to add other concepts around this, but this is the foundations of Rails and it helps you really get started to go build things quickly. So that is it for MVC. I hope you understand it, but if you don't, we're gonna go build a bunch of Rails applications. So this stuff will really sink in because you get to actually use these concepts in your Rails apps. So that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, let us know in the comments below and we can do a follow-up video on that. But until then, we'll talk to you in the next lesson. Peace.